All right, so uh, we're back here. We are sharing our poems, and we're still doing the Mitsuki route, so we're going to try to win her over. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Jiro. Yo, Chieko. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Huh? But that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Chieko? Eh? <laughs> Why that, all of a sudden? Oh, I remember this. He shames her in front of the entire class. What a dick. Just buy her a snack. For Christ's sake, it can't cost that much to buy her a snack. I'm always buying Chieko cupcakes and ice cream and stuff like that. No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, um... Chieko nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. I knew it. I can see right through you, Chieko. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Oh, I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yukiri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Um, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yukiri! Tell Jiro to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Chieko. Besides, you should only buy what you can reasonably afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I we've all been reading a lot, so my throat's a little bit sore. I really like when you speak your mind, Yukiri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Chieko, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Chieko knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Mitsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Chieko. It's true, you said you wouldn't go if it wasn't for the cupcakes. <laughs> Ouch! Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Chieko in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Chieko glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Mimitsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Chieko hugs the cookie. Geez, just eat it. Chieko rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Yeah, this guy doesn't like seeing her happy. He gets all annoyed when she's excited about something. No wonder she has depression. Mmm, so good. Mm. Chieko suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Haha, <laughs> you're going through a lot over just one cookie. Mitsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Mitsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Chieko gets out of her seat and goes behind Mitsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Mitsuki reaches up to nudge Chieko off of her. Oh. Chieko suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Mitsuki's cookie. Uh, hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Chieko trots away to safety. Yukiri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes! Kizana, can you tell Chieko to- Huh? Mitsuki glances around. Kizana isn't in the club room. Ugh! Where's Kizana anyway? 
Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. <gasps> you don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but since she's the one who said it and not me, yeah, yes she is. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Huh? Kizana chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. <laughs> the boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Kizana quizzically glances at me. Uh, n never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh... Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't even aware you- I wasn't aware you played music as well, Kizana. <laughs> I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Kizana! Uh, that's... Kizana looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Jiro. Kizana smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... not really. I choose to leave out Chieko's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Mitsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Chieko somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yukiri is back to her book, and Mitsuki disappeared into the closet. Oh good, we got her again. Alright, let me just clear my throat real quick. Uh, my voice is kind of thrashed from all this reading. Alright, we're back. It's not long before Mitsuki comes up to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I kept my promise. I pull the first volume of Parfait Girls out from my bag. Mitsuki takes it from my hands, then quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle manga all the time, you know. I just wanted to make sure! Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Mitsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow. So, you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. Uh, the chapter ended when Minori and Alice found- Kizana! Mitsuki's voice resonates out from inside the closet. Huh? I peer inside. All of Mitsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again?! Uh, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet, so I had to move some stuff around and clean up a little bit. It's all still there, I just had to organize it a bit. Ugh! The top shelf is far above Mitsuki's head. She makes a futile hop, trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Why don't I just offer to help her, put my hands around her waist, and lift her up? Jeez! This is so inconvenient! I'm moving these all back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Um, Mitsuki, there's a stool on the wall over there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself! Mitsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? I mean... I knew it! Well, you know what? Just watch me! Mitsuki hops onto the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Uh, careful. I know what I'm doing! Standing on the stool, Mitsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. The stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Mitsuki is being stubborn as usual. Ugh! Mitsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Yeah! The box suddenly tips. Mitsuki barely catches it before it falls to the floor. The stool wobbles. <laughs> Losing balance, Mitsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. There! Having almost fell, Mitsuki is a bit shaken up. <laughs> Jeez. No need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it! I don't want your help, okay? 
I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Mitsuki forces her way past me out of the closet. Let let's see. <clears throat> the classroom chairs have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. Aha! Mitsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls it on its wheels back over to the closet. Uh, it's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls, but I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. You're just gonna let her die because you're afraid she'll scold you? <laughs> Yikes. Ugh. Mitsuki climbs onto the chair, then slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. No, you have to be ready to catch her when she falls so you can land in one of those stereotypical poses where you're almost kissing and you're like on top of each other. One of those. Learn to be smooth. Jeez. That's a nice picture of her, but her face looks a little creepy, I gotta be honest. Aha! There we go! See? I can easily do it now! Mitsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Huh! The chair swivels. Mitsuki catches herself on the shelf. <laughs> what are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who was it who told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I hold the chair while Mitsuki reaches back up. I can... I can almost see up her skirt. Yeah, it is a little low there. Uh, I force myself to turn away. Mitsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes, I'll be dead. Mitsuki wraps her arms around the par Parfait Girl's box set, easily the largest one on the shelf. Ugh, heavy. Hey, Jiro! I, I don't think I can bend down without falling! Hurry and take this one! Huh? But then I have to let go of the chair. That's fine! Just for a second! Hurry up! Alright. Let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. What do you mean, stand up? Mitsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back- Mitsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Oh, we're dead. Oh, we're dead. Mitsuki, the box. What are you looking at? You're trying to look at my- My- Mitsuki's legs shake. I'm not! I was just- Mitsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box. You- You perv! You set me up! Go away! Get out! But- I'll do it myself! Uh- the chair suddenly swivels beneath Mitsuki's feet. Mitsuki! Ah! The scene turns to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Mitsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. I got you. Ooh. The full force of Mitsuki, Mitsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Mitsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. I knew it. I knew it was coming. Ugh. My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. Ugh! Slowly, Mitsuki comes to her senses. Ugh. She presses her arms straight into me to prop herself up. Huh? Mitsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Ugh! Gross! Gross! <coughs> A fist pounds into my chest. Mitsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking, you sicko? Everything okay over there? I heard a loud noise. Kizana suddenly peers in. Kizana! See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez! Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. So I hope you're happy. I didn't... Somehow it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Kizana. How? It seems pretty explainable to me. She asked me to hold her up while she stood on a chair, and then she got mad at me for almost looking up her skirt. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Kizana says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no! My... my... Huh? I look down. Mitsuki is kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. Oh. Ah, uh, it must have landed on the page. Mitsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut and throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. Oh, that was really important to her. I'm sorry, Mitsuki. <laughs> Mitsuki, are you... No! Mitsuki's voice squeaks. I see tears on her face. Uh, I'll help you get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so... Mitsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No! I don't even care that much. I'm just... 
Having a really bad day today. Mitsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It, it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Mitsuki shakes her head. Just every day is so hard. I just want to come to the club and, and... Mitsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. All right. Well, I'll help clean this up, and I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Uh, I pick up volume two of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will help cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Mitsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to me. Huh? That sounds really strange, coming from Mitsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well, I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? <laughs> Mitsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box in their correct order. After a little bit, Mitsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box onto the shelf where Mitsuki wanted to put it. Then, I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. Alright, that should do it. I hop off the stool. Mitsuki averts her gaze. Thanks. <laughs> it's nothing. Mitsuki is holding the volume I set aside in her hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good! Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. The thing about cheering me up? If you insist. Well, I'm glad that he was nice to Mitsuki, because this guy's such a dick I was expecting him not to be. But I wish he could be that nice to Chieko too, or Sayori, because in this case Sayori has depression and could really use a little pick-me-up. But no, he has to be a dick to her all the time. I'm just saying, if you can be nice to one of them, why not all of them? Anyway, we sit in the same spot as last time and I open the second volume. Mitsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle, repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. <coughs> oh, sorry, my voice. I guess Mitsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Kizana gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep! Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? <laughs> Told you! Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Uh, we're going for Mitsuki again, so... Mitsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Ugh! Is it that bad? No! No, it's not! It's good! It's really good, okay? There, I said it! Ugh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all! Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around! You're trying to impress me? Obviously! You think I'd let you enjoy Yukiri's writing more than mine? Give me a break! Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll just tell you! I'll tell you! You- Mitsuki's face freezes, like she just realized something. Y you you're trying to impress me? Mitsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I have to use the bathroom! Red-faced, Mitsuki quickly walks out of the room. Oh, that's cute. Oh, she got so flustered. Hey, Jiro, did you do something to Mitsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No, no. I just told her that... My voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Kizana that I'm trying to impress Mitsuki. Hmm? Kizana sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this for Mitsuki, didn't you? Uh, I mean, not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Jiro? Oh right, because she's an AI, I just got it. No, I'm not cheating, it's actually kind of an easy mechanic. And also, I fucked up pretty badly. I, uh, picked Sayori things quite a lot. Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't understand Kizana's joke at all. Anyway, how do you think Mitsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Mitsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Kizana's hands. Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. 
Did you read this, Kizana? Of course, I liked it. Ugh. You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Huh? But Jiro wrote this poem, and we're supposed to share with everyone, right? Ugh. Mitsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Jiro is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Ugh! Never mind! Uh, Mitsuki. I'll give you the poem, but that's still not very fair to Chieko. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Jiro is right, Mitsuki. It's not fair if you don't let any everyone finish reading it. Fine. Mitsuki returns my poem. It's not like she's going to like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. All right. <sighs> Fine, I'll read another poem for you. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has lots of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm gonna tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my- That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really near- lean, uh, It's your fault, Jiro. I don't know how, but you did this. You're the one who made me mess up. Stop looking at me so much. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been, well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so, so consider yourself lucky, okay? <laughs> well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. Jeez. Just look forward to tomorrow too, okay? All right, I will. All right, next up, uh, Kizana again. Hi again, Jiro. That was kind of silly with Mitsuki earlier, wasn't it? I'm glad the two of you have been getting along so well. That's one way of putting it. Anyway, I already read your poem, but you can go ahead and read mine now. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop, violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Kizana's writing tip of the day. 
Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Yeah, I know that's a lie. It doesn't matter if you save your game. The game deletes your save data after it kills somebody, so you can't go back to it anyway. All right, next, Chieko. Oh, I like this one, Jiro. It has some nice feelings in it. Uh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> that's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. But if we're in a literature club, why do we have to write poems every day? Why can't we also, like, read a chapter of a book, discuss it, write some short stories? There's more to literature than just poems. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh, why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see, see you liking something sad, Chieko. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Chieko, that's unexpectedly poetic. Huh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Jiro. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. Oh, that's a cute title, I guess. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. Aww. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be before- eh, Sorry, there's a lot to read. I'm not used to reading this much ever. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap. Chieko, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Kizana taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Oh, God, this guy's a dick. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Chieko's always had a bad habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. And lastly, Yukiri. Um... Are you still mad at me? 
Huh? For disrespecting Mitsuki yesterday. Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you... You prefer her writing over mine. That's not really true. Meaning that I, when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no. Yukiri, you might be reading into this a little too much. How could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before, my, before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. So please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Kizana wants, but it's not fair to you when you could be enjoying your time with Mitsuki and Chieko. Yukiri, please. It makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yukiri smiles sadly and puts her head down on her desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but it's as if, sh it's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts, aside of myself. All I can do is accept that that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide by that request. Alright. I didn't get to see her poems that time around. Hmm. Does she and Mitsuki hate each other that much that if I go for one, I can't read the poems of the other? Because when I went for Chieko, I could read both of their poems. Anyway. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we need to stop? Um, I think we can get through a little more. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Chieko has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry, I thought you heard it all already. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Once again, my throat hurts. I've been reading a lot today. Uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? T um, Kizana? Yeah, we're going to be having a re- uh, For God's sake. <sighs> Try this again. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Chieko's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Chieko, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Kizana? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that! Uh, I agree with Mitsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yukiri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Chieko. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Mitsuki and Yukiri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But! I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun! That's right! And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to, same, to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Mitsuki and Yukiri remain silent. Chieko looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Chieko and Kizana have been really trying hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Mitsuki doesn't have any arguments left. <sighs> okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Mitsuki. What about you, Yukiri? Yukiri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yukiri. <sighs> this club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yukiri. But anyway... Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Kizana! 
This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to recite it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Kizana flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. And we're gonna have to uh, pick up on her poem later. So, uh, I'll see you then.